Good morning, friends. So this week in social studies, we are going to start a new unit. We are finished with our Native American unit. However, we're going to use what we learned in that unit and kind of connect it um, to our new unit um, and see some new interactions between groups. So this week, we are going to start learning about um, European exploration. Um, so we're going to talk about those European explorers who came to the new world um, to start discovering things and um, finding the people who were already there, who we already know were the Native Americans. And today you are going to um, read a book and it's called Encounter. And in your packets, you have a um, sheet that goes along with this book. So go ahead and pull that out. And you're going to do page one, the sketch notes, um, while you listen to me read. Okay. So this book is called Encounter. <clears throat> the moon was well overhead and our great fire had burned low. A loud clap of thunder woke, woke me from my dream. All dreams are not true dreams, my mother says. But in my dream last night, three great winged birds with voices like thunder rode wild waves into our bay. They were not like any birds I had ever seen, for sharp white teeth filled their mouths. Pay close attention, guys, to the illustrations. Is that really a bird? I left my hammock and walked to the beach. There were my dream birds again, only now they were real. Three great sailed canoes floating in the bay. I stared at them all through the night. When the sun rose, each great canoe gave birth to many little ones that swam awkwardly to our shore. I then... I ran then and found our chief still sleeping in his hammock. Do not welcome them, I begged. My dream is a warning. But it is our custom to welcome strangers, to give them the tobacco leaf, to feast them with the pepper pot, and to trade gifts. You are but a child, our chief said to me. All children have bad dreams. The baby canoe spat out many strange creatures, men, but not men. We did not know them as human beings, for they hid their bodies in colors like parrots. Their feet were hidden also, and many of them had hair growing like bushes on their chins. Three of them knelt before their chief and pushed sticks into the sand. Then I was even more afraid. So what are they doing as they're sticking these sticks into the ground? What does this kind of symbolize here? Who are these people? <clears throat> Our young men left the shelter of the trees. I, who was not yet a man, followed, crying, do not welcome them. Do not call them friends. No one listened to me, for I was but a child. Our chief said, we must see if they are true men. So I took one by the hand and pinched it. The hand felt like flesh and blood, but the skin was moon to my son. The stranger made a funny noise with his mouth, not like talking, but like the barking of a yellow dog. Our chief said to us, see how pale they are? No one can be that color who comes from the earth. Surely they come from the sky. Then he leaped before them and put his hand up, pointing to the sky to show he understood how far they had flown. Perhaps they have tails, said my older brother. Perhaps they have no feet. Our young men smiled, but behind their hands, so the guests would not feel bad. Then they turned around to show why they had no tails. Our chief gave the strangers balls of cotton thread to bind them to us in friendship. He gave them spears that they might fish and not starve. He gave them gum rubber balls for sport. He gave them parrots too, which made our young men laugh behind their hands all over again, knowing that it was our chief's little joke that the strangers looked like parrots. But the stranger behaved almost like human beings, for they laughed too, and gave in return tiny smooth balls 
the color of sand and sea and sun strung upon a thread. And they gave hollow shells with tongues that sang chunga chunga. And they gave woven things that fit upon a man's head that could cover a boy's ears. For a while, I forgot my dream. For a while, I was not afraid. So we built a great feasting fire and readied the pepper pot and yams and cassava bread and f fresh fish. For though the strangers were not quite human beings, we would still treat them as such. Our chief rolled tobacco leaves and showed them how to smoke, but they coughed and snorted and clearly did not know how to use these simple things. Then I leaned forward and stared into their chief's eyes. They were blue and gray like a shifting sea. Suddenly I remembered my dream and stared at each of the strangers in turn. Even those with dark human eyes looked away, like dogs before they are driven from the fire. So I drew back from the feast, which is not what one should do, and I watched how the strangers touched our golden nose rings and our golden armbands, but not the flesh of our faces or arms. I watched their chief smile. It was a serpent's smile. No lips and all teeth. I jumped up, crying, do not welcome them but the welcome had already been given. Why do you think the visitors were so interested in the gold nose rings and the gold armbands? I ran back under the trees, back to the place where my Zimmy stood. I fed it little pieces of cassava and fish and yams from the feast, then I prayed. Let the pale strangers from the sky go away from us. Mazimi stared back with me, at me with unblinking wood eyes. I gave it the smooth balls the stranger had dropped in my hand. Take these eyes and see into the hearts of the strangers from the sky. If it must be, let something happen to show our people what they should know. Mazimi's was silent. It spoke only in dreams. Indeed, it had spoken to me already. When I returned to the feast, one of the strangers let me touch his sharp silver stick. To show I was not afraid, I grasped it firmly, as one would a spear. It bit my palm so hard that the blood cried out. But still, no one understood, no one heard. They did not hear because they did not want to listen. They desired all that the strangers had brought, the sharp silver spear, round pools to hold the hand that gave, the, gave a man back his face, Darts that sprang from sticks with sounds like thunder that could kill a parrot with many paces away. We were given none of these, only singing shells and tiny balls on strings. We were patted upon the head as a child pats a yellow dog. We were smiled at with many white teeth, a serpent's smile. The next day, the strangers returned to their great canoes. They took five of our young men and many parrots with them. They took me. I knew it was a sign for my zimmies, a sign for my people. So I was brave and did not cry out, but I was afraid. That night, while my people slept on the shore, the great sailed canoes left our bay going farther and farther than ever our strongest men could go. So soon the beach and the trees and everything I knew slipped away until my world was only a thin dark line stretched between sky and sea. What else was there to do? In the early morning, another la land lay across close enough to see. Silently, I let myself over the side of the great canoe. I fell down and down and down into the cold water. Then I swam to that strange shore. Many days I walked following the sun, many nights I swam, and many times the sky was full with the moon and the stars. All along the way, I told the people of how I had sailed in the great canoes. I told of the pale strangers from the sky. 
I said our blood would cry out in the sand. I spoke of my dream of the white teeth, but even those who saw the great canoes did not listen, for I was a child. Okay, and look at what he's trying to do. What message is he trying to convey to the adults? So it was, we lost our land to the strangers from the sky. We gave our souls to their gods. We took their speech into our mouths, forgetting our own. Our sons and daughters became their sons and daughters, no longer true humans, no longer ours. That is why I am now an old man, dream no more dreams. That, that is why I sit here wrapped in a stranger's cloak, counting the stranger's bells on a string, telling my story. May it be a warning to all the children and all the people in every land. And that's the end.